Hey guys, I have another special guest tonight. He is over 130 days sober. He's lost over 50 pounds and he's completely cured his type two diabetes. So I want to introduce you to Keith. How's it going? Good to hey see you. Hey. It's a pleasure. So, yeah, so you you uh, eliminated your type two diabetes since you quit drinking. I have, it's been a really crazy journey on this on this path so far. So about, about a year and a half ago, it was in 2022, I had gotten news that I was, that I was on the path of having type two diabetes. It was a really kind of scary thing because my stepfather actually the year previous to that had passed away from it. Oh. So I had watched what had happened with that. And it just, it was one of those things that was so scary watching the entire thing and knowing that this is something I was going to have to deal with too. Mm -hmm. And so I got on the journey of, of figuring out what I needed to do with my health. And I started by changing diet and then I started changing it by not eating any sugar anymore. So that was a kind of a big one that I kind of eliminated. And then it kind of led me to the, to the path of really realizing that drinking was a part of that game as well as part of the sugar that was coming out of that as well. And then even us coming together tonight, having this this conversation that we're having together happened because of me watching your podcast when I was going through this. And it, it kind of intrigued me of going like, I think I need to try this and see what I can do that's different and so do something you, com you completely said you watched, different. You said you watched one of my videos at like two, two thirty. I did. Morning. It was like two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. I was actually drunk. In the, and when I was watching it, <laughs> it's just kind of funny. I was coming back from going out with a group of people on a Wednesday night and I think it was like 2.30 in the morning, I was completely blasted and I was watching a series of videos and I, I found your video and I started watching it and I started watching others that you had on there. And at the time, I, I'm gonna say that you were kind of still kind of new to it as well. You were, you were just in the process of doing it. I'm guessing like, where are you right now in your process? Like, oh my gosh, like nine months. So it's been nine months. So yeah, you almost. were about not, were, not nine months, but almost. <laughs> you were two to three months ahead is where you were at the time when I watched you. Oh yeah. At so that process. So I've watched the evolution of you on that process as well, as you've been doing this too. So I watched this video and I kind of took the advice of what it was that you had said. You were like, hey, give it give it a week, see what happens. And if yeah. it works for a week, go a little bit longer. We'll try that out, see how that goes. And I just remember that that was one process. I'm kind of getting ahead of that on that. But, I, but the process is in 2022, I was out on the road, I was traveling and I was doing traveling photography and I really kind of was living my dream of what it is that I really wanted to be doing. I was doing international travel, doing street photography, doing adventure photography. And then what ended up happening is I was in a Middle Eastern country for 10 days, for almost for two weeks, actually, for 14 days. And, and after Egypt. And that was in Egypt and a couple of other countries within that region, too, that we went to, too. And for it was the first time I hadn't drank in probably like 19 years oh, wow. for that for for a period of time of like seven days straight <laughs> so Jeez. so what it ended up happening was I felt this sense of myself very different I felt like clear I felt I was getting up in the morning while I was there I felt a lot more positive I was a little bit sick actually too kind of from not drinking it was kind of an odd thing I kind of got like a really bad cold too while I was there oh and and then into the second week of being there, I felt like amazing. Like it really changed the entire dimension of how I started feeling as a person. And I didn't know, I didn't even equate it that it was about that yet until about five months after, prior to that happening, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right, five months after that happening, I'm going on that trip, is okay. when I equated that it was that I hadn't been drinking. That's why I felt great. So <laughs> I started, like I said, I started, I saw that, I saw a picture of myself um, and what I looked I like. I think we have a picture. Yeah, I think you have one of those pictures that I showed you. And I saw this picture of myself and I was like, who is that? And I had said that to my wife and she's like, that's you. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, who is that? And I just couldn't believe that that was me. And, and that is the day that I started on this journey was that day right there when I saw that picture. So it started in April of last year in 2023. And I started it by the diet side of it and exercising, like I was saying, that's the first place I started. And then when I watched your very first video, it wasn't that I stopped drinking right away. What I did is I kind of did this, the sober curious route a little bit, if you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I, I tried out what you said. I did it where I didn't do it for a week. And then I didn't do it instead of drinking three or four days a week. I started doing it like two days a week. And then it went to one day a week. And then it became what happened is for a three month period, I only drank like three or four times 
during wow. that 90 day period. And I was like, whoa, I'm really starting to feel good. Something's changing here. And then the night that I, that I, that I really connected with the video that I was telling you about was the night, the last night that I really got drunk. Like I was like, that's it. I can't do this ever again. Oh man. And then like, so you haven't drank since you saw that video. I have not drank since I've seen that video. So it's been since, so officially where I'm at, like I said, I think it's 130 days is where I'm at today. L literally okay. today. Like it's oh, wow. really kind of, it's really kind of cool. Yeah. And you've lost over 50 pounds. I've lost 53 pounds so far. Wow. And is, so is where I'm at. You changed, you eliminated sugar and you changed your diet, uh, before, before quitting drinking. I did that before quitting drinking. I actually went a little bit extreme too, in terms of like what I did with my diet. I think it was something that some people are going to find extreme, but it really hasn't been. It's changed a lot for me. I started doing the carnivore diet. Oh, so, no, so my husband's doing that right now. So that what happened is after eliminating all the sugar from my diet and eliminating it, I was feeling awful when I drank. I mean, it was like a level that I, I is the worst hangovers I've ever had in my life. And I couldn't really understand what was going on. So by doing that, I kind of think that the connection was by eliminating sugar plus going to the carnivore diet, it helped push that process on a little bit faster of not wanting to do the alcohol side of it anymore. Oh. So it, it set off that journey to do it. And I don't know that I've I don't know the last time that I've ever felt like this before in my entire life. I think that's another thing I can add to this. It's been, I think I was 20 years old since the last time and I'm 52 years old. So that, like 20 years old is the last time that I had that experience. Wow. And so you started drinking at a young age. And I did like 14. 14. So yes, same. <laughs> uh, and so we kind of, kind of touched on it. Like your mom was young. Yes. And so like the young crowd and then we're surrounded by adults and, you know, it's just kind of like how we grow up. It's like adult life drinking and Correct. we just lived that life. And I think, I think in, in growing up in a, I grew up in a small town yes. in the South. And I think because of that, it wasn't really frowned upon. I don't think people really made such a big deal out of it. It was kind of one of those things. Oh, it's okay to drink if you're at the house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, if, as long as you guys are here at our house, it's okay mm -hmm. that you guys do that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's exactly. And I don't, and I, I'm not blaming my my family by any means. So oh, it's yeah. not that kind of thing. It's not their fault for my own decisions and things that I made. But 100. but what happened is it, it, it opened up this situation where it was just not frowned upon. No one ever said anything bad about it. And, and so I drank starting at a very young age. Yeah. And then I took a break from drinking actually when I was 18. I didn't drink from the time I was 18 until I was 21 years old. And that's the last time I remember feeling like this. So it's kind of like, and, it, and it's, time. it's a long time. That's what I'm saying to you. And it, and, it, and it became a consistent thing where I drank at least three days a week for the better half of since I was 20, 21, 22 years old, like a minimum three days a week. And it's wow. not that it's, it's not that I was an alcoholic. So I think that's a fair assessment to say. It's not, I didn't, I didn't have an alcoholism problem, but I definitely had a, I didn't know when to quit problem. Yes. I didn't know when to not like, I couldn't, I'm not that kind of person that can have one beer or one glass of wine or one drink. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I've never been able to do that. Yes. I'm the kind of person that was like one, one leaf and you know, it just keeps on going. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you hear me? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm the same type. Like I can't just have one and be done. Like it just, I going. cannot hear you. I'm so sorry. You, you can't hear me. What's going on? Hold on, people. <laughs> Technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> Can you hear me now? I cannot. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You there? Yeah. Okay, we're back. <laughs> okay. All right. Back. No worries. No um, worries. <laughs> so yeah, like back to like, you can't drink just one drink. Yes. Some people are going to be like, well, yeah, you're an alcoholic because that's, you know, if you drink. I, I, I hear people say that that's kind of the definitive definition, but it's not like I needed it. And it's not something I had to do like every single day of my life. You, I think you it was just, a, I was in a perpetual loop. No, no, I wasn't physically dependent whatsoever. It's just, a, it was a loop that I was kind of in and it was just a, 
I didn't realize that I was in that loop until not doing this. Okay. So mm -hmm. something I, something that I experienced for a long time in my life was anxiety. I really suffered from it. It's so mm -hmm. deeply. And the funny part is I didn't even know that I suffered from anxiety. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Like how to say that. And, and yet when I kind of discovered that I was suffering from it, the reason I drank is because I thought drinking was helping me with the anxiety. <laughs> I, I thought that it was making yep. me feel better. And, and it wasn't, it wasn't doing any, it was, and in fact, it was the thing that was just progressively making it worse and worse and worse and worse all the time. And, and I didn't make that um, distinction until being on the other side of this right now. Yes. This is the first time pretty much in my life that I've never had anxiety before. I, I don't, I don't have it anymore at all. So, okay. So you said you eliminated that also. Yes. Okay. And yeah, cause we would drink to think that it was calming us. Yeah. really it just was making everything so much worse in like social anxiety <laughs> so you are in the filming industry you've worked in what atlanta and hollywood or so LA. i've worked i've worked in los angeles and i've worked in nashville and i've worked in a little bit of florida and doing it and i've been so i'm, I'm really a photographer more than i do photography and i do documentary filmmaking so i do both sides of that and mm -hmm. i was in los angeles for nine years and kind of the entire process of living out in LA is partying. I mean, it's part of what you do out there. It's part of what it's part of your job. It's what you do. You go to lots of parties. You go to lots of have lots of experiences. So you go out three, four nights a week. It's kind of the DNA of the entire culture. Yeah. And by doing that, I just it, it was just continuation. You know, I wasn't gonna say no to free drinks, you know. That was another one. If you're getting free free <laughs> booze, like well, that's even better. <laughs> Same. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, anytime like you're gonna get free drinks, you're like, heck yeah, I'm there. Like <laughs> and, and we got a lot of we got a lot of free drinks, I can tell you that out there because of just having connections with a lot of different people and going to a lot of different events and knowing people and it just it just was part of the culture. So and I just, I had a, a really good time doing that. I can't deny that. I, I don't take away from my experiences or the things that I've done. And I, I just think that I definitely didn't make always the best decisions. And I think that that's something I'm starting to grapple with and having a little bit of a feedback from that's happening right now is that I've, I've known that I've made some bad decisions because of drinking and I'm just trying to correct that by making incredibly good decisions now. Yeah. So I don't think we mentioned that you are married. You've been I married am. almost 15 years and you and your wife quit together we did and and she did it i think kind of like in a solidarity with me because she doesn't really have the same issue that i have she is capable and was capable of having one or two drinks and calling it a night it I sounds was like always... you're the me and your and your wife is uh my husband in this situation <laughs> that's really funny i mean she was always the one pulling me out of somewhere for us to go home and leave you know it, was, it, yes. it wasn't me doing that to her so yes exactly i was always the one getting in trouble Oh, totally. Same. Always. Every single time. <laughs> like, you didn't have to have that many drinks. Or can you just have a couple drinks tonight? Not the whole freaking like bar. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll try. Well, the dangerous thing is became became one of her really good friends um, moved out to L.A., her and her husband. And we all hung out all the time for a few years together. And she was a mad drinker. So like I, her and I took it to a whole nother level. Like that's all I can say on that side of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then it's hard. So like you guys got together while you were drinking and you guys quit together. So was there a different dynamic? Like you have to get to know each other doing things sober now. And like that, learning yeah. So, so what's taken place with that that's been really cool is that I, I mean, you could probably speak for this within your relationship as well. How many Fridays and Saturdays or Saturday mornings or Sunday mornings did you wake up and you had like an absolute insidious hangover and you wasted my, most of the day <laughs> like watching Netflix, like, like binging Netflix and drinking water and eating crappy food because you felt like crap, right? Exactly. That, that's completely gone. I don't even think I've even watched Netflix or anything on TV, a movie even, except for maybe one or two little things. I watch a lot of YouTube stuff, but I haven't watched any binge content in, in the entire time since I haven't been drinking. So I noticed there was a connection to that as well. And the irony is, now we go do things like get up really early in the morning on a Saturday morning, go hiking, or we go mm -hmm. out and do something outdoors and we go take walks and we go have other experiences and go hang out with friends. And it's very different. And, and the, the days feel very long and they don't feel like the, I don't have enough things I can fill my days with is what it feels like now. Yeah. I feel like now, I mean, what I really noticed since I quit drinking is 
doing real estate while I was drinking, I was like, oh, like I would try to get everything done before I would start drinking because <laughs> exactly. I mean, I don't want to deal with things while I'm exactly. drinking. But now it's like, I'll stay up till 11 o'clock working on transactions because like I'm not drinking anymore. And it's, it's, like, it's I, quite, it's quite odd, right? It's like, I, yeah. I used to, it used to be okay. I, it was almost like I would get excited. Like I, get it finished up so I could start, you know, get the party going. Right. Exactly. Or like on the weekends, you're like, Nope, I'm pretty much off limits as soon as I quit drinking. And totally. you know, now I'm like, oh, okay, I'm completely available now. Cause I am not drinking. And do you guys, do you guys go do more things like on the weekends and stuff than what you previously did as well? So <laughs> yes and no. Um, okay. We got rid of our side by side last july and that used to be our, like our colder weather like experiences um but so this winter has been a little bit different we've done a lot more home projects okay and gone to movies a lot more but like during summertime when we like when we first started 75 hard i went to the lakes more i went to the rivers more we would go on we have uh it's called the green belt we i would yes. go on hikes here and um just way more adventures, but so I'm excited to see what this spring and summer bring. I mean, right now spring has been really crappy and it literally hailed and rained and wind and sunshine today. So, oh, I wow. mean, so you're, oh, we're, we're having the opposite right now. I mean, it was beautiful. It was like 68 yeah. degrees and clear today. So yeah, it was like two or three years ago. It was about 80 degrees oh. this time. Um, I had my kids' birthday party out back, and now I'm like, uh, I don't really know what to, to do right now <laughs> because it's so crappy. But, yeah, I mean, I would like to experience, like, what going out on the on the side-by-side -side is sober because I we did so many trips, and, I mean, I was always wasted, and Same. we would never drink. And so it's like we explored all over Idaho and the, and the mountains and stuff, but at the same time, I mean, I can share with you that it is an experience that I don't even know how to put to words, except for I can I can do things so much longer than what I used to be able to do too. Like we can go yeah. hiking for miles now, and I don't even breathe. It's like it's yeah. it's a bizarre experience, and it's it's a really weird feeling. It's kind it's like I feel like we got like a little bit ahead in this conversation because there's something else I wanted to kind of add to this, and it's like I think that the thing that put me off. Um, if you don't mind me doing this, right? If I go a little bit further, just say what I was going to say. So what happened is when COVID happened, you know, in 2020, when that whole entire incident of life that we all were going to happen, <laughs> I, that's a moment that I stepped up my drinking game to a level that was something I had never done before. I drank every single day and that yeah. it's something I did. I was, I was in a very angry place because my dad, my stepdad had passed away. He's a man who raised me and we grew up together. And it was a really harsh thing to watch what had happened to him in the hospital. And, and because of everything that was happening then, they wouldn't let people come in, you know, everything that was going on during that time. Mm -hmm. And just, I was angry. I was angry at the world. I had, I had two businesses that I had been working on. One I had been working on for almost four and a half years. I had raised money for it, had everything ready to go and it completely failed. I wasn't able to launch it because we, because of all that happening. So it kind of like destroyed that entire, all that work and all of that, that stuff that we were doing. I was getting ready to go on the road for uh, 12 months with a cycling team. I was going to be their lead mm -hmm. um, videographer and photographer. And we were going to 15 different countries around the world and that completely got wiped out. So yeah. it just felt like it was just like the worst moment of life is what it felt like that was going on. So I turned to like all the way to alcohol at that point. I mean, oh, I was yeah. drinking a lot. And I think that that then getting the news of what that was doing to me, what that had done to my body at that time, it's just, it's crazy to think of where I am now. I, I'm grateful. I think where I'm coming around to that is I'm grateful for all of that happening. I think, I think that's crazy that I'm saying that now because I wouldn't have said that, you know, a couple of years ago, but I'm so deeply grateful for all the stuff that took place and what happened because I don't think I'd be on this path. And I feel like through this, I've been given a second chance. I think that that's something I'm guessing you're kind of feeling that way in your life too, that it feels like a second chance of, opportunities that you didn't even know were even possible yeah i mean i can definitely relate to covid i drank a lot <laughs> uh i was potty training i mean my son turned two that march and wow everything started getting canceled i mean i didn't really stop my life and i don't care if anybody is going to whine about that i didn't stop my life covid didn't stop me from doing anything yeah i didn't um, stop either 
And I mean, we never got sick. We were completely fine and healthy, but uh, it's because, you know, they said drinking will keep it away. So, you know, I just drank and drank and drank. And then my neighbor <laughs> next to me, like she was at home then and our kids are the same age. And it was just like, what do we do? We're just going to get wasted all day. I remember like sitting in my kitchen, one of my friends was pregnant and she came over and, um, uh, it was just her, her husband was, uh, working in Oregon at the time. So there was like me, her, and then the other mom next door. And I just remember we were like taking shots at noon because there was nothing else to do. I, 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 I'm, I'm very aware. I was doing stuff like going and buying beer at the store and I'd already have two of them drank before I pulled back in the driveway. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know who the heck that was that was doing that. That wasn't something I ever did. I was not yeah. a drinker and driver, but I was during that time. I really, and I wasn't a day drinker until COVID. Same, happened. same. So I think it was like, it was coming off of that has been, you know, that, that's been another thing too, is like to take it all the way to that level like that too, and then bring it back down to, to the normal level that I was at. Like that's, yeah. I thought that I was doing good because I brought it back to the normal level. Let's just say that. That's a funny part of this too. I thought, yeah. oh, I'm back to three days a week. That's better than seven, right? <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 2020 and 21 were kind of a, a crapshoot for the most part. Except I would totally agree with that. Especially when it comes to drinking uh, for us. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess we, that now that you mentioned like you went from seven days to three to four days, <laughs> think about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so true. We, our life was just revolved around alcohol. It was insane. It was truly an insane moment. And I think that that's, you know, to think about it now, it, it looks, it feels like it was all a dream. It doesn't even feel like it was something that was real that took place anymore. I think that's another big part of this. And it, it, that is something I think I would, if, if anything that I could have people hear me say is that there's so many people out there that suffer from anxiety. I know that they yeah. do. It's a thing in life. And I can tell you this right now, it will go away so fast. If you don't drink anymore, you have no idea. You don't need pills. You don't need anything. You don't need medications. I'm telling you right now, it'll go away. It's a fact. And that's yes. something I will, that's the one thing I will attest to a hundred percent inside of this experience so far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a podcast coming out with, um, I had with this lady today and she has eliminated her anxiety and depression. And it's absolutely amazing because we are sitting here, you know, feeding ourselves alcohol because we're playing the victim and exactly. we don't want to switch our mindset to, be better for ourselves because we are expecting somebody to come obviously hand us pills or, you know, hold our hand and make life better for us when really it's up here that, you know, we have to change to change our whole entire life. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think, I think the other thing too, is everybody's looking for a quick fix with everything. And I think that there is no quick fix. I think that if you can commit to something and be disciplined in what it is that you do with it, I think that's where the real change is. And I think that's where it started for me is like, I saw that picture of myself, like I said, and immediately the next day I started exercising. And that's something I hadn't done. That's another thing. I hadn't exercised in a few years. I hadn't even been doing anything. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. So the um, I, I saw that. And the first thing I did is I got all my hair cut off. Then like That day I went and got a haircut. And then I immediately started exercising. And then a couple days later I started um I started, like I told you, the journey of not eating the sugar. Mm -hmm. And and then and I went from a person that could barely do two push-ups to do to I do like 200 of them now. It, it's, a, it's a crazy thing. And I work out like four days a week minimum. It's a thing that's really changed everything. And I've taken all the things that I used to have associated more to negative things and, and turned them all into positive things. I think that's what's happened with all of this too, because I actually get up in the morning and go exercise. That's yeah. like unheard of. I never did that, ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a uh, Shannon uh, has a question. How did you eliminate sugar? I quit drinking and sugar seems to have replaced it, which obviously I hear happens so many times. So you said Shannon is who, who's, who asked the question. So yeah. Shannon, I would say the hardest thing that the hardest thing that I've actually eliminated was sugar more than anything. So I can understand the journey of it, but I did it kind of incrementally and slowly. I kind of, I started eliminating stuff and backing it out. So I would eat less and less and less and less of, of it. So by, it took about, I think about two and a half months is what it, the process was for it. And then from there, I wasn't eating it anymore. So it was something I definitely had to wean off of. Did you have a, uh, like. Yes. Like fatigue. Yes. 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 <laughs> like fatigue and 
uh, headache. I had withdrawals and fatigue and, you know, they, they say that sugar, and I think that's something I've learned through the process of learning about all this, is that sugar is more addictive than cocaine. And I don't think people really realize the gravity of that. We're just your brain and we're just your biochemistry. So it, yeah. it, it was hard, but I can tell you that's another one. If you can get off of that, that's the journey that starts a lot of changing a lot of things. It was, yeah. it was immediately, when I eliminated sugar for good, the, the next month after that, when it was gone, that was the first 15 pounds off my body right there. Boom. It happened wow. in 30 days. It happened so fast. It was like, whoa. So, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, because sugar, yeah, is highly addictive and it's literally in everything. And I try to teach people, like, look at the labels. Yeah. Like there are going to be things with natural sugars and like whatever fruit is it has sugars in it. So when I say I'm not going to eat sugar, it means I'm looking at the back of the label and seeing like totally. uh, five grams of sugar. But then at, right underneath it, it says includes five grams. And it's disgusting <laughs> when it's like a fruit juice and it says 24 grams of sugar includes 24 totally, grams totally. of sugar. You have to, re like, you have to be really careful. That's what I'm saying. I, I think people need to sit down and take a glass out and take out a teaspoon mm -hmm. and measure out and see what that looks like inside of a glass and how much sugar that is. I think it'll freak you out when you see yeah. it. It's like, well, a, it's a, it's a big deal. And I think it's just paying attention. Like I said, to that label, like just because you say I'm not eating sugar, it doesn't mean that like literally you're not having any grams of sugar during the day. It just is what type of sugar are you putting into your body? Yes, of course I'm going to eat fruit. Yeah. I don't eat, I don't eat processed sugar. So let's qu yes, clarify exactly. that. It's okay, it's okay to eat some fruit. I mean, that's, that's okay thing. I do eat yeah. some fruit. But, I mean, but I don't like I don't eat any processed sugar at all. I don't eat any like I'm not eating any junk food. I don't eat anything in a box anymore. I don't eat anything like that whatsoever. That's absolutely amazing. And that's what I try to teach people. I did a challenge back in 2019, a no sugar challenge. And that's where my mindset changed with sugar is like just paying attention to how much sugar is actually added into it. And it's like it's now I look lot. at everything and I'm like, that's absolutely disgusting. Like you don't have to have the, like those naked juices. They are not healthy for you. They're not healthy for you at all. I think there's a lot of things that we think that are healthy for us, but they're really not. And I think that, I mean, the big one is you've got to get it rid of processed foods and you have to get out. You got to get away from foods that have been, that have additives to it, like lots of sugar. And there's, there's another one called malodextrin. If you've ever heard that before, I've that's heard that, yeah. like it, people need to look out for that because that's actually sugar. That's all it is. It's just a different way of wrapping it into a label so that they can get away with telling you they're not giving you sugar. But that's what yeah. it is. And then like aspartame, like if it says sugar free, look Definitely. at the back of it and look for that. I mean, my dad was super weird about us having that at all growing up. So I guess I've always just been like. Of course, there's going to be things that I eat and drink or whatever that have that in it because I can't avoid every single horrible thing in life. But, you know, no, you're just I'm not, I'm you're not saying cautious. don't be human. Like, if you know, yeah, I, don't right. think, I, don't, I don't think there's anything. Want, I think we've just we've gotten so indulgent in everything that we do today. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with having some ice cream now and then. Or oh, for sure. So like, I think that's ridiculous. But yeah. if you're going to do it every single night or you're going to do it four or five days a week, it's it's no different than any other addiction. It's the same thing. You're exactly. Doing, you're doing the same thing to yourself. Just like the chick that I had a podcast with today, she said it. She's like, you have a fat mentality. Like yes. you're a fat person. You want to lose weight, but yet you can't let go of, you know, sugar. And she like uh, compared like two people that had gastric bypass surgery and one of them lost all the weight. But still couldn't get rid of that fat mentality versus the other one that got rid of that fat mentality. And I was super fit and like muscular and healthy. Totally. And the other one just gained all the weight back. It's like, it's that mentality of like your eating goes hand in hand with, you know, everything else in life too. Like if you want to do I, better. I mean, it's, we're, we're, it's like what you just said, it, it, it goes hand in hand with it, but it's also that we've been, we've been conditioned through tons of advertising and marketing that these are things that we're supposed to have. And it's just not the truth. You know, that's having worked around that industry and watching that on the back end of it, I can tell you, it's kind of scary. Your people are constantly pushed that stuff and it's in everything. So yeah, like you have to do your homework. You have to really see what it is. If you can just eat a basic diet of eating whole foods, that are not processed that by itself will eliminate like 80 percent of this it's one of those things that it's it becomes really easy after you get through it yeah um <laughs> oh uh you look great man keep it up did you get the keto flu not having carbs like so i guess I, when you I, did... I actually did yes i did have that for a little while so i know i, I had a, a complete biochemistry change that took place 
So my gut flora fauna was completely messed up. So going to the bathroom was kind of rough for about two weeks. And then getting to the other side of that, yeah, I felt really sick and kind of like really weird. But it only lasted for about two days. So, you know, 14-day okay. sacrifice for your health is, is not so a bad thing. Are you still doing – I can't remember. Did you say you're still doing carnivore diet or you're just eating balanced? So, no. I'm, I So, now I'm doing carnivore diet. But what I've added back is I have added back some stuff back into the diet a little bit. Like, I do eat some potatoes now and then. And I do eat fruit in the morning, like, when I'm – when I before I – or after I exercise or things like that. Okay. So – and I still drink coffee. So, uh, you know, and I've even cut that down to kind of a normalized place as best that I can. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a different topic. <laughs> yeah, different uh, topic. <laughs> tell us uh, more about the carnivore diet. Uh, are you worried about cholesterol? So I'll give, uh, I'll give some uh, information on that, okay? And it started with this. When I got back the information of my blood work that I had the type 2 diabetes that was going on, my cholesterol was at 348, like, 348 okay so wrap your head around that for a second scary right since i've been doing the carnivore diet every single one of my numbers of every single thing you can think of i'm talking about 30 different pages of a blood panel that has been done all the way from oh. vitamins to minerals to cholesterol they're all down my cholesterol is 198 now is what it is. oh without and medication without medication no medication and purely literally eating meat is what I ate seven days a week for the first six months. So like can you, a, nothing else. Can you, I mean, I will never do the carnivore diet because I'm not a meat <laughs> lover. So, but like Jonathan's doing it right now. And what kind of things, like walk me through a, like a day of what your meals look like. Um, so I, I, I started by doing intermittent fasting, so I didn't eat until, and I still do this. I don't eat until between two and three o'clock every day. And I'll mm -hmm. eat like a 23, 25 ounce ribeye. And that's all I eat. And you don't have any other cravings? No, gone. Nothing. I haven't wanted to eat mm -hmm. anything else. I eat a little bit more than that now too. I eat like two meals a day. So I'll do like eggs and bacon or, and fruit. So that's one meal. And then after that, I'll have a steak or hamburgers or chicken or, fish or something like that but you don't eat like i mean like they say like liver and tongue and i've done a little bit of, of the of the the uh, organ meats but not too much i haven't really i haven't needed it, it hasn't been a lacking thing in my diet okay and so yeah. you feel completely sustained doing intermittent fasting i have never day? felt this good in my entire life on this planet that's the best that thing i can tell you between all these things that i've done i equate that i think all of them are equal if, if, if you were to ask me it's not just the not drink anything. I think it's a huge one. Plus, trust me, that's like probably 50% of it. Yeah. The other parts of it is eliminating sugar. And then the, the rest of it has been eliminating, you know, toxin, toxic foods from the, from the diet. Yeah. So yeah, you did the whole entire thing, like quitting drinking, changing your diet, eliminating sugar, you know, that elimination diet of doing the carnivore diet is so, I mean, Yes, I believe the research, but I don't believe that it's for every single person. And oh, I'm not. I'm not. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm not a doctor, and I'm not right? going to. Yeah. I'm not going to like suggest that every single person goes ahead and does this. I think you should look in. I, should, I think you should get blood work done and like look at that while you're doing it. Yeah. When you, change, when you make a radical like shift like that, but I the results that are coming out right now are are they, they can't be argued with. I mean, there's right. it's it's pretty it's it's pretty stark actually to be honest with you. Yeah, Jonathan's lost like, I don't know, five to seven pounds already just eliminating, but he had an addiction to bread. So <laughs> I I but I, I was on that path with that too. That's another one. I I don't I don't think I'll ever eat bread ever again. There's no need for that in our diets. That's something I think we've been conditioned in for whatever reason. I think it's fillers and for us to eat grains. And when you look at the things that are inside of grains and what they put in them, it's it's just not worth it. It's 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 not good for you. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so just a ribeye. Does does your wife do the diet with you? Yes, she eats a little bit more carbs than I do, though. So she okay. she's she has a little bit different diet than I do. Okay. So you guys literally quit drinking and changed your diet together. Yes. Yes. It was really cool. I'm, I'm grateful that she did that with me. It was a really positive thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, the double <laughs> drive through at McDonald's is in my town is backed up to the parking lot all day every day. People are not eating fast food in moderation. They live on it. I oh. think I see, I see that everywhere. I don't think I don't think there's a town that you can go into where you don't see that taking place today. I see it all the time where I am too. I yes. see I see Chick Fil A and 
uh, all the all the different chicken restaurants and every every hamburger place, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, they all have lines going out the back every single yeah. year. The average person eats a warehouse of sugar every year. It's so sad because I watched something uh, on YouTube, I don't know, like a little while ago. And it was like how much sugar was consumed back in like the early 1900s versus now is disgusting. God, disgusting. Um, it's 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 here. Here's one for you. It's not even that long ago. Actually, it's it's how much sugar has been consumed since 1982 to where we are today. You should look yeah. into that statistic. It's horrible. we barely we all barely ate like maybe a five pound bag a year, and now the average person eats between 200 and 250 pounds of sugar per year. Well, so, and then people complain that they're unhealthy. My body hurts, and I'm <laughs> I, I, I can't know. lose weight. Like. I'm fat. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. It's like, uh, I mean, that, that's like, a, look that's at a, your diet. Like, how many times are you eating out a day? How many coffees are you drinking? Like, how much sugar is in like totally. every single thing you think that is healthy? Like, oh, I, I mean, I'm, I mean, it, I am it, like not Miss Perfect when it comes to my diet because I mean, I love pizza, <laughs> and you know, I love treats too. But I'm like, I'm conscious. Like, I know like my limits. <laughs> With food, I, I, oh, that's, that's why. Enough. That's why I tried to say that. You know, we used to have we used to have more balance. I could say culturally about the way people. You know, people used to go out to di dinner on a Friday or Saturday night. They didn't go out to dinner five, six times a week, and they didn't eat snacks all the time or desserts. And you know, yeah. they didn't even drink all the time. You know, if you want to see it that way too, I think that it's it's one of those things where we evolved. This has evolved because we live in a culture that just pushes things in so many directions at us. And yeah. it's hard to find what information is real until you actually go and do stuff for yourself and kind of see what's going on. We're not being given the correct information. I can tell you that as a fact. And, I, and I'll, I'm going to add another nuance to this because I didn't tell you this part of it. So I'm going to like tell you this too. I actually went to the doctor in Mexico. I didn't go to the doctor in the United States. So <laughs> that's, who put me, that's who put me on the path to getting healthy. It wasn't, yeah, I don't. I have a very hard time with Western medicine and, okay. and what, what we're learning about in the U.S. because these doctors, I think they're better at being drug pushers than they are at being physicians that are actually helping people. But there is a group of physicians that are starting to do that and starting to recognize that it's actually diet more than anything. Mm -hmm. so. I, I, my uh, NP psych, he, like, I'm prescribed certain things, but he's like, no, I'm not going to keep, I, like, he wants to see me make one bottle last like five months and then he gives me natural things or he's like, I want you to try the Mediterranean diet. Like, so it's, he's more of a holistic, I guess you can say he doesn't, he doesn't like giving me medication. He wants me to totally. like treat my diet, take like a natural supplement. That's where that L-theanine comes in when I'm feeling anxious. He's like, do not take your anxiety pill, like save that for actual, like, like really bad episodes and like totally. you need to calm you down and that's what i do so i don't i don't think there's anything wrong with i mean we we have advanced medicine of you know there are medications that absolutely and actually do help people that that would be ignorant to say oh, otherwise yeah. i'm just saying i think it's interesting that the first thing that they go to is like i'm gonna push pills on you i'm not gonna push maybe let's look into our diet and see what's happening there exactly it, like people drink because of anxiety you have to get rid of anxiety to quit drinking or smoking. And my, not my, is, is that a question that someone's asking or a comment is what you're saying? People drink because of anxiety and you have to get rid of the anxiety to quit drinking or smoking. I will say is that a that, circle. I feel like that's a circle. That's like, kind of a circle. What we were just talking about a second yeah. ago. The reason I drank is because I had anxiety and I thought that by drinking it would get rid of my anxiety when in fact when i've quit drinking i don't have anxiety anymore so it's really been the catalyst i think i think alcohol is the catalyst for for anxiety well i think anything. a lot of us are trying to cure our anxiety with dr like pills drugs or pills and like prescription drug drugs and like every other form but not oh, totally. at, like, and i'm not saying and i'm not saying to anybody this is going to be easy okay this is an oh, easy yeah. path but you know you have to do you have to do the old adage that people say it's one day at a time and i know that that's you know people don't want to hear that and that's hard for people sometimes but it really is it's just one day at a time one well, step and, at a time one day at a time and i think like when it comes to anxiety i think yeah it's per individual i mean people ask me how my anxiety is i literally <laughs> was just telling my husband grandma came and got them and 
I have like doom and gloom anxiety <laughs> and I was like full of anxiety until my kids got home. And it's like, I like, that's my anxiety and I have to learn to deal with that. And like, uh, drinking wouldn't have helped that situation at all. Like, and then my kids came home and I like started relaxing. I, I don't know if that's just my instincts or what it was rush hour. That makes like, sense. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I just want my kids home. I want them safe. Not that like I don't trust her driving with my kids. It's just I don't trust the other people out there. <laughs> like, I, I I can see that. That sounds like it sounds like it's your mom anxiety is what you have. So that makes yes. I I completely would understand something like that. Yeah. But 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 has it not helped you with your kind of like other anxiety maybe that you were experiencing yeah, or like thoughts I, that were going through anxiety, your head and things like that? Yeah, my anxiety is different now. Like yeah, you're right. Like I have more mom anxiety and um. Yeah, it eats me alive sometimes. <laughs> like the things that go through my head, like I literally was thinking one day about like, uh, I don't know if this might be too much, but um, I was just like, had this like random, like just thought in my head about like something bad happening at school. Well, the next day we all got text messages saying somebody called in threatening like this and that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like that was oh, just goodness. my instinct. And I'm like, okay. And then ever since then, it just was, it just never went away. <laughs> I think that's interesting because I think I did that for a while too. I think I confused my intuitiveness with anxiety until I, that, that's been another part of this journey too. It's like, I'm finally listening to my internal voice and realizing that that's a natural thing that we're all supposed to have that helps us to, to, yeah. you know, walk through things. And I think that that's been closed. That I think that really got closed off from drinking for me big time. I think that's something I didn't have access to for a long time. Yeah. Like we didn't know how to deal or cope, uh, normally because we were masking everything and hiding behind the bottle pretty much totally <laughs> so Sorry. i didn't realize i was quitting alcohol until i won an eight week fat loss transformation challenge where i eliminated alcohol for those eight weeks i drank for 35 years i would get drunk oh, wow. two nights per week i mean two nights per week that's not bad i was more than that I still think that's a lot. I, I think one night a week is still bad now that I'm seeing the whole right? thing. So yeah. I think that's amazing. That's yeah, amazing absolutely. That. That's great. It's, and it's funny because you started with an eight week or sexy Lexi. You started with an eight week, <laughs> eight week challenge. Just kind of like I started with 75 hard and I was like, eh. totally. And here I am almost nine months. <laughs> so we're actually like pretty sure I'm nine months. Like people kept saying, quit counting the days, quit counting the days. And I was like, ah, I think, I, I think I'm making days. I think that's what I, I think I want to get to a whole year. And then after that, I won't ever do it again. I think that's where I'm at. I think yeah. that's the decision that I've made with it. It's a, I, I enjoy that. I'm, I'm not necessarily having to communicate that with other people at this stage. And I don't even have to even say that to my wife every day. It's just that I know the number in my head. And I'm kind yeah. of just walking through it every day. I, I completely don't even know what number now. And all I knew is I wanted to get to 180 days. And then after that, I was like, okay, now I'm seven months. Now I'm eight months. Now I'm nine months. Totally. And then when I hit 365 days, you know, I think that's, one. I think that's the biggie. I think that's the one that's the goal to get to, because I think that's the game changer. Exactly. And then people will, you know, look at you even differently. Cause you're like, Oh, you made it a year. Cause apparently in your first year of sobriety, like you <sighs> relapse is, you know, a huge thing. But I think like once you shift I, your I mindset, hear that. I think it's, but it's, if you can shift all these other things simultaneously with it, I don't think it's, just about alcohol you know it's it's yeah. about i think the other thing i've realized of, with it too is you have to face yourself and you have to face the challenges that you have like life is not going to be perfect it doesn't work that way mm -hmm. i think what i've i think what i've realized now is that it, like do i have that feeling of anxiety yes i still have that sometimes i'm not saying that i don't have that like that, that feeling that oh gosh i have to deal with this thing but what happens is it goes away in five minutes because i'm actually just dealing with the thing and I'm yeah. not running from it anymore. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to go drink this away and just run away. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, it, it'll go away if you just drink. It, it won't be there. Don't worry. You know, that's what it kind of felt like. And now I'm realizing I did that with a lot of things. And I've had to just, like, face them, look at it for what it is, and keep going. And I think that's been an awesome thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I think he has asked this question before. Um, okay, I might have asked this before, but do you think a drinking age of 25 would be better for colleges and high schools? I feel like it might make it safer for students. And I, my response, I think, when he asked this originally was, I don't think any age is going to stop people from drinking. Just like they're going to, like drugs are illegal, but people still get drugs. And I, mean, I don't I, think it's an age thing at all. Yeah, I, I agree. Think, I mean, they can try and try and try, but I mean, I... 
would find alcohol and it didn't I, I would it wouldn't have mattered about the age thing I mean like we said I started you did as well I started drinking at 14 I, I, if I could find it at that age 25 would not work you know I think I think what it comes down to is this I think what we should do is the same thing we've done with cigarettes and stop we should eliminate uh alcohol advertising altogether I think that that would be the more effective thing yeah I mean I know uh James has mentioned something about putting labels on beer and or alcohol and they like didn't like I mean, it did, would, and, would that stop you from like you know think think about that right now it's like does that stop i, I if you're ever going to a store you see people buying cigarettes right when you're getting yeah. gas like they, yeah. they're still buying their packs of cigarettes even though there's a big sign that's like it's gonna kill you so yeah, just, i don't think it has anything to do with that i really do think it has to do with if you can eliminate the advertising and bring it down from that point of view because look what we're already seeing right now and this is a this is a big deal right now so 38% of Gen Z is not drinking. So that's a big like turnaround that's happening. Like that's that young generation is is rejecting alcohol. They're seeing what's happened with the older generations because of it. And, like, and we don't I think want that, to be like those. And they don't want to be like that. I, but I think it's great. I think that's a yeah. positive like foot forward like in a direction that I think if more people do that, like I I think the alcohol the like, industry is actually in trouble. I think we're heading towards a place where a lot of people are starting to realize this right now. Well, I mean, just look at like White Claw, like they ended up making a non-alcoholic <laughs> seltzer and it just, yes, okay, I understand like it's status quo, like yes, I'm drinking a White Claw, but it's non-alcoholic, but also at the same time, it's a freaking seltzer. Go spend four bucks on 12 of them <laughs> instead of freaking 20 bucks on like eight of them. I don't it's know. Kinda like, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. It blows my mind. Marketing for sure at its finest. Like I mean, it's all it's all marketing. It's like you you, you know, it's what it really comes down to, and that's like what we were are... buying Spindrift, and then now there's a hard Spindrift, and like now there's hard, like there's hard ocean spray. I'm like, the, so <laughs> it's like now White Claw's going the other way, and all these other ones are going hard, and I don't know. It just I, I think it's really funny. I know it's something it's I, comical to watch. And like people will like argue with me and be like, well, it's good for them because they still feel like they're drinking. No, just go get a seltzer and save your money. Just go like, get you're seltzer. Just go, go, buy, the uh, yeah. still. go buy, it's... go buy, uh, what's the other brand called with the, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, the little seltzer ones that are flavored. Uh, bubbly. Oh bubbly. yeah. Bubbly. Just yeah. buy bubbly. It's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, and I'll drink like cer certain seltzers. I'm like, oh my gosh, this tastes just like a wh uh, white claw or truly. And so they all, so if you find the right ones, they taste almost exactly the same. And I, you're I not totally agree spending with you. like a fortune on them. It just, it, <laughs> it amazes me. I don't understand. And if you I, want I'm to buy it, that's cool well. on you. But I mean, I think that they could probably come with extra chemicals too. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows what they're adding to it? Just go get some basic spring water that has bubbles in it and have fun. Yeah. Oh, it kills me. <laughs> I mean, I can go on and on about that. Uh, <laughs> it's really funny. Just wanted to stop. Just wanted to stop to be healthy, uh, get back into my fitness, and actually enjoy being in the present moment. Alcohol just made everything so much worse. Amen to that. Like totally, I agree with that hundred percent. And I don't think people realize it until they actually quit drinking. Like they think that alcohol. I mean, I was there. I I know exactly. Like we thought it would make life better, events better, things better, life better. You totally. Know, like oh, this happened to me. I better drink my sorrows away. But then you look back and you're like, oh, wow, it's not actually terrible dealing with my feelings. No, so. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what happened the other night. So two nights ago, we went out to dinner with a group of people. There's about 10 people there together. And all of them were drinking, except for my, my wife and I. We, we were drinking uh, Tapa Chico's. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, they have they a hard Tapa Chico yeah. and they have a non. I, I, it's hilarious, right? Yeah. But but this is what they had there. So, okay, I was drinking that. But I had the best time I've had hanging out with people in the, in the longest time and then yeah we we went home we felt great i woke up the next day and I didn't have a hangover and i really had a great time i think that's what i've come to realize too my that's another piece i think my social anxiety is gone i i literally thought that i had this bad social anxiety but i think it was the drinking that was making that worse yet again that's what i'm trying to say i connected that dot yeah. to that again i mean i was definitely one that would be like can are you sure i can't just have five shots of this tequila before <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, just pour half this bottle into this tumbler nobody's gonna know exactly like, I mean, it was ridiculous it's really funny because I, I totally get it and now i can go out to eat and i actually yeah i can enjoy my meals better i enjoy the tab a lot better and like the server gets a better tip now because i didn't drink their tip away 
And well, I mean, now I can go to ice cream afterwards because I'm not exactly. You can do a lot of other things now. That's that's the exactly. other part. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so glad to hear you guys quit together. It's usually only one. How much money have you saved not drinking? Speaking of saving, you said you three X so, drink them also. So yes. Yeah, so simultaneously, it's happened kind of like this. Yes, that has happened. And then the other part of it is that. I spent a lot of money on alcohol per month. And and part of it wasn't just for me drinking myself. It was also because we bought drinks and we were, it's part of the social dynamic of what we do going out and stuff in the industry we work in. So I probably spent like $1,500 a month on alcohol is what the average was. Yeah. Yeah. And so like add that up, like add that up over 12 months and then add that up over five years and look what you could do with that money if you invested it, right? I mean, you can buy a new SUV with that much. <laughs> but if you invested it, like I'm just saying, and just kept like letting it grow, where would it go, right? In 10 right. years, it'd be retired. Oh, uh, it's, it's like, disgusting how much money you spend. It's just crazy. That's what I'm trying to say. Like when you think about how much money, that, that's the other thing that's really happened. I don't spend money on stupid things. And I can tell you this too. Another part of the health and fitness and diet part of it is that I don't drink or eat crappy food anymore at like two o'clock in the morning coming home when you're going out on a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday night. No more Taco and Bell. No more tacos, no more Waffle House, no more, you know, whatever's open, you eat it, right? That's not happening anymore. So, like, I literally have a cutoff time and I don't eat anything past that. Oh, and you save money on, like, getting food delivered to you because, let's totally. be honest. I mean, totally. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's times where I was home alone, like, Jonathan would be visiting his family in Oregon and I would be drinking and I'm like, gosh, I'm so hungry, but I don't want to do anything. Let me just, like, order this food. And I'm like, how is that 50 bucks for one thing? I'm like, that's I, I know. Ridiculous. Like, start adding this stuff up and connecting all the dots to it. It becomes, like, crazy how much money you spend, like, on it. It's more than what you even think. I think it's even more than what you think you're spending on alcohol because it's connected to a lot of other things simultaneously. Oh, for sure. So you've saved about 1500 dollars a month plus some probably yes, and exactly. you're also making more money now that you've I, drinking. my my ability to do the things that i'm doing in business right now have they're they're exponentially growing better and better every single month since i haven't been drinking i think it's connected a lot more dots i i i'm very serious about what i'm doing now i'm not really avoiding it i don't have the anxiety like i was saying before you know like we've been talking about this whole thing about the anxiety part of it i just i had anxiety even doing business and talking to people and that's gone yeah, I mean, if if I was still drinking, I would definitely have to be buzzed to do a live stream. <laughs> like, oh wow, so that's I guess, crazy! Like, I guess like I definitely overcome some social anxiety because like I can get here live without like needing help. I don't think like, I could if if we if we would have sat down and tried to do this, um, you know, like 130 days ago, I couldn't have done this. There's no way I, I would have been. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. I could. There's no way. I can't even just say. There is a way. There isn't a way. I would have been riddled with anxiety. It would have felt crazy. And I don't feel like that at all, like talking to you. And I don't care if a million people are watching. It wouldn't bother me anymore. It's not like that. Yeah. I mean, I always was like, gosh, man, like I just need something to get me through, like, you know, take me off the edge. But yes. I mean, now like I can do it. <laughs> I don't know. It's so it's, it's a weird concept. Um, I, th I think it's becomes it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, like the what you can see too, like around you. I think that that's another thing that becomes really interesting. Like you're, you're able to see so many things you couldn't see before. And you're just like, wow, yeah. where am I? Exactly. I know that it felt like, I know I had this weird feeling or this thing that they say that takes place. Um, I had the, I had this very euphoric feeling that happened about 90 days into not drinking because of my dopamine coming back to its own normal self. And mm -hmm. I had never felt that before, or, or I just didn't remember that feeling before. And that's something that, was amazing. I was like, what is this? What, why do I feel like this? Why do I feel so yeah. good? <laughs> yeah. And you kept going. Some people like hit that pink cloud phase and they're like, oh, I can have a drink. That's the word fine. that I was looking for. No, Thank you for saying you, that. The pink if cloud. You, yes. If you have an issue with alcohol, that euphoric phase, like it just, it's going to trick you into being able to have a, a one drink, but that one drink is going to lead you right back down to your freaking rabbit hole where you came from. Is that what is that what happens with people like during that time? I I mean I haven't researched it a ton, but like through my own therapy sessions, like yeah, she described it like um, 
like you kind of get over this and then that's where people sometimes think that they're okay to just have that one drink. But I, I heard that too. That's why I'm asking you that. I've heard, I've kind mm -hmm. of heard some similar research to that. And I was trying to figure that out. You know, it's funny because I didn't feel like that at all. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is what it feels like. I was like, Oh, I need more of this. This is better than anything I've ever felt like. So yeah. I wouldn't want to go back and do that again because of that. That's weird. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember. I just remember getting to my 75 days and being like, wow, this is amazing. I am deciding not to drink anymore. Um, I think it's sad that fast food is much worse than drinking alcohol moderately, but y'all don't want to admit it. Let's be real about everything. Cherry picking isn't productive. I think fast food is are, terrible. Are they, are they saying that we don't think fast food is bad? I think it's sad that fast food is much worse than drinking alcohol moderately. Oh, I think fast food is awful. I never would defend that by any means. I think it's awful to eat that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'd put it in the same category. That's what I was trying to say before. I think sugar, fast food, alcohol, drugs, they're all addictions, like nicotine, all of it. It's, I, I think you categorize a lot of them side by side. Oh, yeah. I'm, I don't think one yeah. is like necessarily worse than the other. I think they're all bad. <laughs> no, I agree. I mean, because they're just all all combined easy to grab and get and then you just spend a ton of money on and then it becomes easy to just go out to eat instead of making yourself a freaking sandwich. And when I mean, you cook it, when you cook at home, you know where your food came from. I think that's another big part of it too. I know that I'm not, you know, it's not being doused with seed oils and it's not being doused with sugar, like we've talked about different things that you don't want on your food while you're eating it. Yep. And uh, who's prepping your food? And who's making your food? What are they doing to it back in the back? You don't know either, right? <laughs> there are times where I go into like places if we're like out traveling, and I'm like. Uh, I'm not really sure I want to eat this now that I see who cooked my food, but That's yeah, really funny. That's um, really funny. quite a few people's reactions to my choice not to drink is funny. They act like it's a big deal and bizarre. It's really not. The drinking culture is bizarre. How socially acceptable it is. I 100% agree. Yep, hundred percent. I think that just happened the other night when mm -hmm. we went out to, to uh, dinner with all those people that they, they were like, oh, um, um. You know, it's okay that you're not drinking. You know, I mean, I don't know. It was this weird reaction of like, yeah, I don't, I'm not judging you because you don't drink. I don't care. Like, why? It's like if you quit, if you quit doing some like really hardcore drug like cocaine or heroin, would someone say to you the things that they do with alcohol? It's really bizarre. It's a, it's a very weird like, like response that I think people mentally feel guilty because they themselves are trying to deal through it. And I think that they think that you're attacking them because you're doing something for yourself. Because I think that it's so socially acceptable, like you were saying, in yeah. the vernacular with alcohol, that just think about how many things it's connected to from a social like uh, structure. Like it's everything. It's like sport, sporting events, going to like how many bars are there? I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and I can tell you there is, there's a lot of bars here. Like it's literally, this is a huge drinking culture. So it's yeah. kind of odd when you go out here and you don't drink, people think that you're an alien. So it's kind of a weird thing. <laughs> well, yeah. And here in my state, people think that you're of a certain religion if you're not drinking. So you're like, wait, I'm just not drinking because I don't want to drink. I am not. That's a whole other level. <laughs> I am not. Uh, no, I am not there. I mean, just like here, if somebody says you don't drink coffee, they think that you're that same religion. So it's like. No, oh, I wow. Just, okay. Just, I yeah. understand where you're coming from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, like during my process in the beginning of choosing not to like i choose not to drink and um people are like are you really gonna quit are you really done drinking are you really like you just don't want to drink anymore it's like is that a problem i've had a lot like, of people ask me that too and it's very weird and bizarre it's like you know i'm i'm i don't i'm not i swear i'm not judging anybody i don't care if someone else does yeah. this or not i'm not i'm not telling you know, what's right for me is not right for everybody else i don't think it looks that way and i don't think everybody is i don't think everybody has a drinking problem you know, yeah. like that's one of those things we were saying. I don't, I don't, I think there's some people that actually can have one or two drinks and I think that they're okay with that and that good for them. I think that's amazing. I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, if you have a problem with sugar, like you're going to have to watch like your sugar intake and where you put yourself with, you know, you're going to put yourself in like a bakery and like a candy store exactly. like until you get control of it. Just like exactly. drinking. Like if you have a drinking problem, you're probably not going to put yourself in wineries and breweries or around people that, you know, are ridiculous. You know, it's fine I mean, being I around certain people when they're drinking, but like, 
like now that we're not drinking, it's kind of like, why do I have to be around you if you're going to be drunk and annoying? Like, I don't want to be around you. I, I don't like, really want to be around that either. I think for me, it was a little bit hard. Like I, um, I didn't go home for the holidays this year. And I, it was literally a lot of it was connected to that. I wasn't ready yeah. to be around that yet. And because it really is a, a kind of a thing that's in my family a little bit. And I'm not saying that yeah. they all have drinking problems, just like at the holidays, we all drink a lot. It's been a thing that we've always done. And I just kind of didn't want to be, I wasn't ready for that yet. I think I emotionally and mentally couldn't have like faced that yet. Now I, it's, it's, it's easy. It's become easier and easier. So you're about where I was like during the holidays and I, I set hard boundaries. I was like, I'm going to this grandma's house and this grandma's house. Like, I'm not going to do what I normally do and go travel and try to see everybody. Like, cause that's where my anxiety kicks in. Cause I am stressing about going to see this person and that person. And like, totally. oh, crap, what if I miss this person? And then I'm drinking with everybody because they're like, Oh, we haven't seen you in six months. That's so what, that's what I thought was going to happen too. And, and ironically, I just went home to my family like in the last uh, two weeks and it was the best visit I think I've, I've had in years. I, I was so chill and relaxed and yeah. I came to actually realize I think I was the problem more than, <laughs> they, than, than they were. That's the funny part to see about yeah. this now. And that's something that's big of me to admit that, you know, to, to see the other side of that too and realize yeah. it was me. It wasn't them all along. <laughs> well, and it was nice. Like I could get up in the morning and get my day going and like start it earlier so I could have more family time in the morning and still have the rest of the day with the other part of the family. Totally. Like, it just was completely different. But yeah, I'm, st I will still hold those boundaries and not like go to everybody's house because I just, I, it's too much for me. Like mentally it's like, no, I won't cave to drink, but it's just like mentally too oh, much. I, I, I fully understand. I think there's certain situations I'm still not ready to be into yet. So, oh, like, yeah. I, and I think it'll get stronger as it's going. Cause I'm just taking baby steps with that as well. And, I, I've been to a bar for the first time now and didn't have a, didn't bother me at all to be there. So that was yeah. a good first step. I was like, okay, this is cool. I can actually hang out here and it's not about drinking anymore. I went to a brewery downtown during Christmas time. And uh, I mean, some of you that are from the PNW 10 barrel, but um, I had club soda and lime <laughs> at a brewery totally. and, it, and it, the server looked at me like, all of us, because we all ordered, uh, some of them ordered soda and like we ordered clubs, like soda, club soda, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And it's like, she was like, ashamed, like, she was ashamed that we didn't order a beer, but like we got burgers and we got nachos. And it's like, you can still go to a brewery and eat. It's no, not totally. It doesn't, it's not about just drinking, it's about the food too. Like some places have really great food. So yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Wineries, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I can't do that yet, but the, but ironically, mm -hmm. I'm doing that for Easter. Really? Yeah, it's I did it last year, so it's gonna be fun to go with this group of people this year and just bring like Pellegrinos and have like you know soda water because that's yeah. what I'm gonna do. Well, and like usually Easter, you wake up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> of all days, you wake up and start having mimosas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally. You don't even want to know. Like last year, I'm not exaggerating. I I, I drank uh, I drank um. What are those frozen frosés? You know what that is? Oh yes. I drank like That's twelve frozen, of them rose, last year. Rosé, rosé. I drank like twelve of them last year, and they were huge too. I was oh, gone. And so that was that was Easter last year. So it's gonna be really funny to see how that works out this year. Yeah. No. Oh my gosh. Uh, I guess I can get orange juice. Mm. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick with. Uh, I'm gonna stick with Pellegrino and maybe throw some electrolytes in it and have a have a little mocktail out of that. That's a good idea. And like you can enjoy like the treats and stuff more. And totally. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like for me, I can be more present with my kids. I think I'm going to be much more present with this group of people and kind of realize that I, again, I don't think it's all of them. It was me. I'm going to still say that one more time. I don't think a lot of them have a serious drinking issue. So, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of drinking, you mentioned that you have drank a Scotsman under the table. <laughs> Yes, I did actually. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a crazy story. I don't want to mention his name right now on this, but at some point I'm going to. It's something that I put out on social media because he's going to pick it back up. He's an actor who we were uh, together one night, and he talked a bunch of crap and said, "Oh, I can drink you under the table." I said, "Let's do it." So we sat, we put two bottles of whiskey on the table, and he passed out like after, and I still was going. So, yikes. Like, yeah, that's crazy, crazy, crazy experience. I can tell you that. Like, I, I was not expecting that. And it kind of like woke me up to like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Keith, you need a YouTube channel. You have an Instagram. I do have an Instagram and I'm in the process of actually doing a YouTube channel. It's going to be connected to my photography and like my journey on that for the last like 17 years. So I have a body of work that I'm actually getting ready to put out and showcase that to people. Yeah, Cause you have like over 25,000 people on Instagram. I do. I, I, so what I did, another thing that I did that was cathartic for me that got me back to being myself again is that I didn't have the normal things that I could photograph during um, COVID. So I started doing nature photography and doing wildlife and it just became something really cool for me. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and, and I've kind of integrated that as being my peaceful nature time that I have when I go do photography. But what I do is the stuff that you're seeing right here on the screen is I do um, travel photography and I do um, adventure travel photography. And like, since you quit drinking, how, how has that, like, how has your travel experience changed? <sighs> it's, it's amazing. I don't even know what to say. It's so different. I, I, I'm, I, I'm just grateful for it. It's, it's different. I think and even like, my, my photography has gotten better too. That's something that I'm really, like can't believe how, that I could even achieve that, but it, it's gotten better and better and better what I'm able to see now. What's your diet like on, uh, same, same, same. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much already kind of ate that diet when I would go places. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to try things when I'm traveling. Like, that other people aren't like I'm okay with eating meat on a stick in some random place like in a country because I just want to try the food so who knows what I've eaten you know yeah and I, I, I like trying new things and, and and it's funny because when you go outside the United States and a lot of different countries the food's not as wrecked as ours is here in our culture you can eat the breads you can eat the the different things and you don't have the same reactions that you do here that was another thing that happened when I was in Egypt too I actually lost weight when I was there because well, because you weren't drinking beans. But, but it was two things because I wasn't drinking and because their food was better. So you see this picture of me that you see right here in Egypt, right? And yeah. when I came back four months later is when you see that picture of me, the one that made me like get, you know, like finally turn all the stuff around. So you can see how much more weight I gained when I got back from this trip. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. When I saw that picture, I was like, that's, that doesn't look like him. <laughs> it's bizarre, right? Yeah. Like your skin looks different too. It's, it's changed everything. It's what I'm saying. It's like my hair, my skin, just everything. It, it's, I can't even believe that it's possible that you can turn around your life like this from something like that. And I think, I think that's the realization of it too, is that, you know, what is alcohol? It's poison. There, there is nothing good that it actually does for our lives. Everything that we've been told is, it's just not true. It's, it's been manipulated. We've been manipulated to believe that it is through marketing. Yeah. No, I, I think we had a conversation and um, we were talking about how, like, once you quit, like, why even, why even go back? I th was that, like, the conversation we had? Oh, ab like, absolutely. Like, what's so hard like, to, like, stay away from it once you've quit? I think once you've gotten past a certain point with it, I don't, un I truly don't understand why you'd want to go back to it. I think the mm -hmm. only reason that people go back to it is that they have a hard time, you know, maybe dealing with the issues or problems that they have in their life. And, you know, they need to maybe just focus on those and not be afraid of them. You know, you're not, mm -hmm. we all make mistakes. We all do bad things. I, I've made horrible decisions because of like, because of alcohol. I made really mm -hmm. bad decisions. I'm not some perfect person that didn't make things that I'm still having to like clean some of that stuff up right now. And that's okay because I'm actually facing it, doing it and getting it done. And I'm no longer running away from it and trying to, you know, like medicate it with alcohol and run away from it. Cause it's not going to go away. You're just going to make yeah. it worse and exasperate it. So it's not something you want to do. And like, I think we also talked about like society wants to just keep pushing it to where like we feel like we need it. And it's just this, you know, it's a bit, it's a billion dollar industry. I mean, and it's, they spend, billions of dollars on advertising every single year go look into it i mean I, I would challenge anybody to go look up the number of what it is it will, it's crazy how much money is spent it's the number one thing between that and pharmaceutical drugs yeah. and we're one of only few countries in the entire world that allows alcohol advertising i don't know if you knew that too i didn't yeah and but... you see it you know that's a thing here like if you were here in nashville and you're driving down the highway like every other billboard's alcohol here. yeah so uh, because it's a party city, right? So it's kind of what you would see. You would see that in Los Angeles. You'd see that in New York and different cities too, because wherever there's a big city, there's a 
a lot of advertising is being pushed on people with it. And just think about it. It's like it's in all the movies you watch, all the TV shows. It's in it's all your you know, it's celebrities doing it. They're they're they they're always pushing this on you no matter what you do. Just, you, you see that even deeper when you're not drinking anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, James was saying that the Canadian government is still considering putting warning labels on alcohol because of the rise in alcohol related cancers in Canada. And like we were saying earlier, like it doesn't matter, like we can throw labels on everything and it's not going to stop people. It's not going to stop people from doing it. I've never believed that whatsoever. I mean, and I, I was, and I don't say that arrogantly either. I'm not being arrogant towards that. I just know oh, it's yeah. not. Did it ever stop you? I knew that alcohol was bad. I kept drinking. What does it matter? I was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't realize you know, you how do. bad it was. I will be honest. Sam, Sam. <laughs> Um, sorry, there's a dog down there. Yeah, um, no worries. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, once you quit drinking, you realize how bad it is for you. And then you start feeling better. And then you're like, oh, crap, this stuff was horrible for me. And then like people like you that have lost 50 pounds, like it's doable. Like why go back? Like once you, like you said, you didn't have withdrawals. I mean, you're, you were kind of a drinker like me. It's like, we couldn't just have one or two. It was, you know, eight plus, or we, we were the drunk ones at the party. Our spouses totally. were pulling us out. <laughs> I mean, you know, we were the ones acting a fool, but like we could go weeks without drinking. And it absolutely. It's not that that's what I'm saying. It's not like something I had to do or something I had to have it's just that when I did it, I did it. You know, I think that's the key to it. Like if yeah. I drank, I drank. If I didn't drink, I didn't drink. But I yeah. think that, but I don't know why you'd want to go back when you realize the benefits and your your health benefits are huge. I really do think that most of the people that suffer from cancers and different diseases, and I, and I can't speak to this. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying it from that point of view. But I think there's enough conclusive evidence that it's connected to alcohol and to, to alcohol abuse and drinking, because why wouldn't it be? It's a poison that you're literally sticking in your body. And there's I mean, been a lot not... of weird things that I've noticed on my body, too. Like my feet are an example of that. My feet like my heels were, they used to be really um, like thick and like very dry. And now oh. my feet are like, like baby's feet. They're normal and soft. And I know it sounds like a weird conversation now, but it's no, not. actually it's from it my makes liver sense. healing is what it's from. Wow. I mean, that makes complete sense because there are people that I know that, you know, drink excessively and are pretty much functioning alcoholics and they're, you know, their feet are awful. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, I think you don't really realize that there's a liver foot connection that takes place. And when you see it on your feet, you have something that's going on. And that was another thing I learned that I had too, is I had a fatty liver. Like I was at 70 You had fatty a fatty liver. liver. Yeah, I did. And I solved that too. That's gone as well. That's been a big part of this too. Wow. And I love when people are like, well, I don't have fatty liver because of alcohol. I have a fatty liver because I'm, I'm, I need to lose weight. Okay. Well, you have a fatty liver because you're overweight, but you're also overweight because you're drinking and you're not watching exactly. your intake on food and alcohol. So, yeah, you do have a fatty liver because you're drinking. <laughs> it's not because of fat does not create a fatty liver. That's a misconception that that's not true. It's it, it comes from alcohol and sugar. So those are the two things creating a fatty liver. Exactly. So 52 pounds gone or 53 pounds gone. Yeah, 53. <laughs> Push, pushing over 130 days sober and changing your career you know your marriage is better like all these things since you quit drinking and i mean that has it's, to make you feel absolutely amazing i i can't get over it that's what i'm saying and i think the other thing that i that's happened to is someone earlier had asked the question or, or had make the comment about being you know not being in the present moment i think that's a, a big piece of this is that it's really put me in the present moment of life i i literally live in each day that i'm alive i'm no longer thinking about the past and i'm not really thinking about the future it's kind yeah. of like I'm doing it now. And I think the more that I keep understanding that if you want to be successful in this world, truly be, it's you do it in the moment. It's not something that happens thinking the past is already gone. You have to let that go in this life. That's a big thing I think people struggle with. But overthinking the future can give you anxiety too. But it's not, it's not even real. You, right. you're, you're not there yet. Yeah. So very like good for, you know, those that are watching, like you can't dwell on the past because, you know, drinking is not going to, you know, fix your past and then like you know looking towards the future gives you anxiety but like drinking totally. your anxieties away isn't going to help get you to a better future it's just yeah it just puts you in a neutral position i think you know it's an unfortunate thing a lot of people that i do know that that struggle with alcohol different friend groups that i hung out with when i was drinking i don't hang out with those people anymore and i've come to find out you know i, I asked myself were they really my friends to begin with i i, I don't know you know it seems like they're my drinking friends 
Mm -hmm. And and when I look back and I see their lives now, I can see why they have the issues and problems that they have because I had I had them as well, and I can see where they're where all the problems and flaws that they're having with children or jobs mm -hmm. or their household or whatever. It's it's a lot of it's connected to that. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I really appreciate you being here tonight, and we Thank had you. a lot of awesome comments. <laughs> and I like hope to get you back on. I mean, when you hit that six months, I think I I would love to do that with you again. I think it'd be a really yes. cool like kind of marker to see where we are then, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe I don't know uh, if you could throw your Instagram um, name out there. Like, I don't know if you have like a short handle or if it's I don't. It's actually my name. So like, so it's at Keith K E I T H, and the last name is H I L G E N F E L D T. I know that's a long one. And it's at that on Instagram. Yes. So I mean, we'll we'll comment it somewhere, and um, you guys go find him, and <laughs> we will be in touch. Thank you, yeah, guys. Thank you so much. It was great talking with you.